If you like the following content, please leave a tip at buymeacoffee forward slash Whitley. Greetings, financial voyagers. Welcome back to Technology Investment Investigations, where we not only analyze companies, but also provide you with a financial education. Today, our canvas is Technicus Reunidus. Grab your magnifying glasses because we're about to unravel the intricate tapestry of this industrial juggernaut. Technicus Reunidus was founded in 1959, makes this probably the oldest company that we've reviewed so far on this channel. This was by a consortium of visionaries, a team of trailblazers in the engineering construction realm. Their journey began in Spain as Spain transitioned from the post-war recovery to a booming industrial landscape. The roots of TRSA are embedded in an era of transformative growth. And as we would expect with a company that spans back to 1959, there are thousands of projects worldwide, from the deserts of the Middle East to the lush landscapes of Latin America. The expertise spans continents like a Spanish passport filled with stamps to the most challenging construction sites on earth. They've been crafting power plants with the finesse of an artisan. So we can consider this to be a globetrotter of a construction company. This is commendable, but not without some travel hiccups. Their recent $1.2 billion contract in the United Arab Emirates, which was awarded back in January 2009, marked a significant milestone. But let's delve into the anatomy of this venture. Did you know that TRSA's international products count for a whopping 70% of their annual turnover? It's a global footprint showcasing their prowess beyond the Spanish borders. Now, is this a strength or is this a weakness? This is what we're going to go through today. So as usual, we're going to go through the strengths of the company, the weakness of the company, the opportunities the markets offer the company and any threats that are posed to the company by the markets. But first, let's go through the financials very quickly. So as we would expect from a company that has been um, running around for 60 odd years, um, the share price is quite stable. It doesn't move around very much and it looks like it's moved probably 20, 30 cents this way or that way over the past 12 months. Uh, this isn't very good if you're a day trader and you like the volatility, but if you're into long-term investments, this is quite a good company to um, obviously look at. Um, their total sales in quarter one of 2023 was um, 1.2 billion. Um, this is a 45% increase from the previous year. Um, this is due to um, the income from various projects around like United Arab, Arab um, UAE and other um, countries around the world. Obviously, this means that the, the, there's a net income deficit, but this is very small for a company of this size. Big if you're a small company, small if you're this company. Um, so I would say this will come under financially stable. So definitely worth a look at. So I think the key strength of this company is its stability. Not only has it been around for such a long time, its CEO has been around for a very long time. Um, so if you peel back the layers of uh, Technica's reunited strengths with a legacy dating back to the founder's ambition, um, vision still intact, um, it's undeniably a heavyweight in the industry. Now the current CEO, uh, Juan Arubura, um, I've probably pronounced it badly, has been at the helm since April 1998, steering the ship through various economic climates, which have included various stock market crashes around the world and um, obviously the big COVID shutdown of the entire planet. Um, but any CEO, um, any leader of anything that's been around for um, over 20 years normally means that the company has a singular vision and is going to be stable as a result of that. Um, also, if you take a look at numbers, um, it boasts an approximate staff count um, well in the tens of thousands um, and subcontracts as well that go into that. Um, and the bring, people who bring up those projects to life are going to be the best um, that they can get in those those industries, wherever it's building stuff, um, and the, the backbone of, of the, this industrial powerhouse. Um, there's also been a drive for green initiatives, um, so as they're pushing into industries outside of producing oil platforms, um, and so they have scalability um, and experience to deal with potential risks with such ventures. Obviously, it's a, it's a bit of a buzzword, sustainability. Um, so it's going to be interesting seeing how sustainable their endeavors are going to be in the long term, but it looks like they could be quite good for a company on this scale. So if we look at the Achilles heels, 
of, of this company. Um, it's been the stock market drama the past five years. Um, despite the fact that you would expect stability, um, it's, it's everything to do with COVID and the, the problems around um, the um, pinch in money in the markets uh, have left to, to a plummeting stock price. Um, yes, they made decent financial uh, comeback, but it, it's not forget that the, 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 these are scars now of previous battles um, and uh, a lot of their shares have been diluted as a result of that. Um, perhaps in Discord with other harmonious compositions uh, with other companies around the world, this would be worth exploring. Um, but it, it's stabilizing, I think, um, with regard to that. But internally, the company is very stable, and internally, there aren't any direct drives to actually create problems for the company that I can see. The only thing I would hope is that with the CEO having been in there for such a long time that there is a drive to make sure that there is um, leadership within the uh, executive that can come in and take over not just like one person who's been trained for years and can't wait to get in or get in and just play golf um, as soon as he gets in there because he can't bother to do the job but so there would be a nice smooth transition into the role um, and this will just further um, push the concept of stability um, within the company. Um, obviously, for something this size, that would be more important. Having a fool come in who would then break the company up would be disastrous for any shareholders. So if we look at the opportunities that the greater world markets could offer uh, an industrial um, builder um if you think about this company this is like the odd job man who comes around and uh builds your bathroom for you essentially so what is out there for this company um obviously they've expanded in the middle east um and they've gone in, they've made a foray into green energy initiatives which are promising um and interesting uh this is a significant but and we must consider the potential risks and uncertainty tied with these opportunities um, international expansion brings not only rewards but regularly and geopolitical challenges that can't be ignored. Uh, the venture into green initiatives aligns with a broader global shift towards sustainability. The Green Hydrogen and Green Ammonia Production Facility in Australia, uh, which is uh, one of their projects, uh, could be described as a statement, uh, a commitment to ecological transition and environmental advantages. It's this type of project which um, could sustain this company for uh, another 60 plus years if it's like building them everywhere um, and if the globe is to go um, carbon zero fully then these type of projects would obviously allow the company to expand its portfolio so what kind of threats do we have to a company like this well apart from the fact that um, there are obviously big coming countries out there like China and India, which um, internally tend to build their own things um, with their own workforces and their own um, company relationships rather than bringing in outsiders. Um, there's obviously the, the further geopolitical nuances and economic uncertainties and regulatory changes and hurdles that might even um, damage companies bigger than this. Um, while negotiations for green hydrogen and green ammonia facility progress, we must acknowledge that the complexities and potential setbacks inherent in such ambitious projects could knock this company sideways. Um, industrial projects always take a long time to get through. They're not an instant thing. Um, nobody's ever been allowed to put up a factory in a day. No one's ever been allowed to put up a wind turbine in a day. Uh, and this is always going to kind of mean that the, the company's got a plan four, five, six, seven years, potentially even decades ahead before they can get anything done. Um, and one of the big things that, that's, that hit everybody obviously was the, the C-19 pandemic and uh, the more recent wars in Ukraine and the Middle East. And this has led to a slowdown in energy investments, um, especially the Ukraine one. If you think about all the gas and oil that moves back and forth between those companies, those countries and the rest of the world, uh, they appear to have weathered that financial storm, so they've always got deep pockets that the more than they, they, they um, we can appreciate. Um, and the, the recent financial recovery has showcased their ability to navigate through all these unforeseen challenges. And God willing, we won't have any more of these, but 
these are the threats that are out there um, and the share price it has at the moment is reflecting what the world markets already think of this company's ability to weather that um, if you notice it hasn't gone under a dollar um, this is a very good sign um, so definitely worth looking at So how do we conclude? This is a world straddling Spanish European um, build for hire who uh, have managed over 60 years to create a stable company that um, has been able to produce various um, industrial projects from oil platforms through to uh, the next generation of energy um, producing platforms um, in various countries um, around the world so um, I guess you could say that Tenicus Rhinitis is a tale of triumphs and tribulations akin to a roller coaster ride through the stock market uh, the recent financial successes and strategic projects showcase resilience but it's essential to acknowledge and address the lingering concerns as we approach appreciate the tapestry woven by the founders the current leadership which has been there for a very long time and a dedicated staff of very, very, very excellent engineers um, means that the investment has become a journey through time guided by the past and hopefully propelled into the future. I say hopefully because I hate the idea of companies going under. Um, I don't like skilled workers being made unemployed because of um, problems in the greater world economy or because the leadership um, has failed to do their job and make sure that the company has a future. So with that, that wraps up this exploration of Technicus Reunitis. Uh, this is a company with a story past and a challenging present. Um, if you like this journey, if you think it's intrigued you, hit the like button, subscribe for more balanced financial explanations and share your thoughts in the comments below. So until next time, may your portfolios weather the storms and celebrate the victories. Happy investing. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you enjoyed my content, please support this channel by visiting buymeacoffee forward slash Whitley or scan the QR code to leave a tip.